Hi guys and welcome back to DIY Agri, your number one animal scientist and your poultry success partner. In case you are just joining the channel, I'm making a series of video now where I'm teaching people to brood their chicks, their day old chicks from that chick stage, the number one day in their life to maturity. And if you think this is of value to you or any other content around poultry, farming and all that because that's what I do, then you want to click on the subscribe button you also want to click on the notification bell if you think you don't want to miss my next upload so i kind of have a bad news a sad news a sad news you know there was a chick that i lost and i was not supposed to lose that chick you know but i was just not available it's something that i would have been able to uh, avert but then i was not there and it's so it's so sad it's so sad yeah generally they are doing well they are doing well there are some small ones smaller ones um there but then the general flock it's, it's okay it's okay as you can see uh, they are okay so i'll be showing you what happened to that chick right now but before then i have some questions that i know some of you will be asking already especially those who have been following from day one if you're yet to see that video i'll leave the link up here and also in the description down below so i'll be answering some questions uh, like a lot of people have not asked me in the comment section what breed of uh, broilers i took because i've been talking about breeds the haboy car the rostereo head the cop 500 but you have not asked me only somebody asked me on um, a whatsapp chat today so i'll be sharing the breed that i took with you guys and uh, i'm also going to be showing you the medication so far i promised to do that some people are asking that i didn't share that in the last video so i'm going to be sh sharing that with you and one other very important thing you know i took these chicks in on um i think 14th of june and yesterday i was just calculating my birthday is july 19 and it's going to be exactly 35 days and i made some videos earlier where i said you can achieve 2.4 2.5 kg in 35 days so and these chicks will just be 35 days on my birthday so should we just race for that and see what we can get yeah but of course okay uh now i'm going to be blowing the speaker but of course these ones are actually not rosterio hit broilers because i performed that previous experiment with the rosterio hit uh okay let me just give you the answer for this question these ones are the cop 500 they're actually better if you're going to be raising them for more than six weeks so i decided to choose this because you no know, we are not racing in this experiment at least i'm just showing you guys how to brew uh chicks and most of them will actually be for the family consumption uh i'll be selling some of them i know for sure but most of them will be for family consumption since i started buying meat and you know one kilo of turkey now is about 2400 and i was like wow no i'm done doing that you know so that's one and i, I just figured my birthday 35 days it would be a good thing so let's just see what we'll get at day 35 on my birthday and one thing you can do for me guys is i want to get to like 10,000 subscribers before my birthday do you think we can do that yeah 10,000 yeah i think we are currently at 3560 something subscribers but let's see what we can get it's over one month you know it's over one month let's see what we can get if you are yet to subscribe to the channel please and please let's join this let's try as much as possible to reach 10,000 subscribers before my birthday yeah so i'm also going to be answering the question why combine broilers noilers and turkey together is it good yeah i'm going to answer that question and um what else what else any other thing that pops up i'm going to be addressing that but now let's go and see what happened to that poor chick yeah this chick is dying in fact it just died now okay it's dying but then uh it's so painful that i'm finding out late the cause of the death uh as you can see the vent is actually covered it's sealed with poop Removing it would have solved the issue. The vent is blocked with poop, so the poop cannot leave, and the intestinal blockage is what is killing it. And I'm so, I'm so sad right now that this is just gone. 
it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. So, guys, that's one of the reasons why you need to examine your cheeks well. You need to examine them properly. So, you know anyone that is having issues, um, you just undo it. I guess this is the bed I was talking about. I said there's a weak bed that I'm going to attend to. Uh, but then, I was not able to check the course then. I was not able to check the course. So, at the point when I picked it to... Uh, to fix it now, I tell you, a call even came in. I was answering the call, and then when I noticed this guy was giving up, I had to, I had to like end the call. So it's so painful, but that's what you need to learn. That's one of the things you want to learn. This fecal impaction can kill your cheek. It can kill your cheek. So it's painful, but then it's a lesson to you guys. So. You want to examine the best critically. You don't just leave them and run inside to rest or something. You want to examine them, check their activity, the ones that are weak. Ensure that you remove them and examine them properly. Yes, that is very, very important. Like the other one that I marked with, um, with green, like I mentioned earlier, I said the navel is not fully healed but it's healing it's healing and um, i just marked it so i can keep watch over it and clean that area with disinfectant solution and you know so those interventions are very important they are very important if you want your cheeks to to, to survive you want to intervene very quickly so it's so painful that we lost this guy and it's going to make a mortality record two for today I, I think i'm going to be using the tally okay so we have the second stroke so that's that that's that that's that um so but uh i've been trying to examine them i think most of the rest of them uh almost perfect uh, this one's here with uh, the feather just drying but the guy is, is active so those are the things you need to watch out for those ones with feather that are not dry they might be having issues but this one is actually okay this one is okay um, so just keep examining them and if you can see if you, if you notice they are all spread out and evenly it's not as if they are huddling together to get it they are good and the temperature is perfect the temperature is perfect i think we have about 32.6 so yeah 32.4 there so this is the thermo hygrometer that i'm using you want to place it on um, ground level or floor level so that you are measuring the temperature that the chicks are exposed to so i'll keep watching them and um, keep you updated all right so it's a sad thing but then that's what happened to that poor chick and um, uh, it's just something that everyone has to learn from you have to be as available as possible you know, it's not something easy to try to simulate the kind of care that the mother hen gives to the chick. You know, she has to go through a brooding time where she eats only once a day or so. Some don't even eat in a day. They eat like once every two days. And, you know, it's crazy. It's not easy. And when she hatches the eggs, she tries to give them all the attention possible. The predators that try to come she fights them with all her energy and she becomes ferocious just because she's protecting the chicks so it's not easy to simulate that kind of care and give to your chicks when you still have to run around doing family things and all that but it is what you have to do you have to give your best if you want to be successful in brooding the old chicks it doesn't come easy it doesn't come easy and that's why i'm showing you everything that is happening the number of deaths anything that happened that's why i'm showing you 
teaching you so that you can learn from every bit of it every bit of it so let me quickly answer some of the questions i've answered okay i've talked about my birthday don't forget please 10,000 subscribers before my birthday i'm begging you if you're here to subscribe please just click that red button it costs you nothing it costs you nothing and of course you'll be getting a lot you'll be getting a lot from my videos somebody called me today and was telling me how well she valued my videos even our kids they were happy to talk to me you know it's something good so um also the medication so far yeah the medication so far apart from the the coconut water if you're here to watch that video you need to watch it after this one uh the coconut water that i give them on arrival to help them settle in uh, i place them on antibiotics the following morning and this is the antibiotics that i decided to use it's uh it's called kenflux 20 percent aerofloxacin so this is what it looks like you just use um it's uh, one mil to four liters of water so i believe you got that quickly you got that already so kenflux uh and the active ingredient is aerofloxacin yeah that's it i hope you saw that okay and what else what else? why combine why combine professionally and from experience you are not supposed to combine so if that's what you want to hear you are not supposed to combine yeah it's risky and the most important reason why you are not supposed to combine is because there are times that you have problems with chicks sometimes it's from the artery and if you combine chicks from different sources imagine noilas came from hamo the brothers came from zatek uh the talkies i think they are supreme talkies so it's three arteries combining them together so you won't know where the problem is coming from in case one of them is coming from uh is in case one of them is coming with a serious infection and it can transfer it to the rest so you don't want to combine it is risky but then it's something of the level of risk too and life is a risk because i won't want to brood 10 noilers separately four turkeys separately and um the 100 broiler separately it's going to be too stressful so you know i am willing to risk the life of 100 broilers which is the main thing here i'm willing to risk their life so i think that is a risk that is worth taking for me for me i won't do that if i was doing up to like 500 broilers i won't do that i won't try that i will just try and split because it's usually good to raise broil uh, turkeys with broiler so that i can teach them and spoil them to eat and drink more so turkeys are very lazy so what i would have done is just take a few broilers and add it to the turkeys and raise them together so i won't take such risk for a higher number of birds but i was just willing to risk this one so it's a risk professionally you don't brood broilers you don't brood birds from different sources even if they are all broilers professionally you don't brood birds from different sources together so you are able to track the source of any uh, challenge of any issue that comes up so that's that is it professional no it's not right it's not right but sometimes we do something that is not right to get the right result that we want so that's that and one other thing that you may notice i've answered the issue the question of breed medication one other thing that you will notice is here i found at, i found out that i have had to use light for almost day and night reason is because i'm using dark canopies this is not advisable the only advantage of this dark canopy is that the the sucking especially the ones that are dark outside they suck in it and they help to eat up the house especially during the day so you don't have to have any sort of eat but of course even if you are using the other kind of canopy the other kind of uh, covering you don't really need additional eat during the day because our weather here is hot so reason why i use this i didn't buy them for this purpose i was using it for fish before so they were weak and i had to remove them so i had them it's something free so i had to just use it and this light is solar so i'm not spending any additional money to su supply the light so black uh curtains are not really good for brooding because it will darken up the house and during the day it doesn't uh, encourage the birds to eat a lot if you don't 
have a supplemental light so if you know that you'll be able to provide supplemental light at no extra cost then it may justify the need for the black but if i was not getting this black for free i wouldn't buy black yes i wouldn't buy black i would have bought something different that will help them have good lighting during the day so it encourages them to eat so that eating is very important if they don't eat well they don't grow well so that is that about that so thank you very much for watching and please continue watching i will keep giving you updates this is day two i did video on day one i did other videos even before arrival preparation of this place and all that so just keep watching and if you want to learn how to brood this is it for you this is it for you you're going to get everything that you need from my series from the broiler brooding management series so thank you for watching don't forget subscribe 10,000 subscribers before my birthday july 19 thank you very much see you in the next video